I have a message for Chinese radio manufacturers. Tid Radio, Baofeng, TalkPod, etc., etc. You're all making the exact same thing over and over and over again. What do I mean? Well, let's have a look here. If I go to Amazon and I search in ham radio, look how many radios are listed here. Baofeng UV5R, what's that? VHF UHF radio, VHF UHF radio. VHF, UHF radio, they're all the same, 137 odd megs to 174 megs and 400 to 470. There's nothing unique about these. Some of them come with, you know, nifty features, USB-C charging, but by and large, they are all exactly the same radio. And I had a comment on my channel the other day which was talking about this and, it's, and the person commented and said that Chinese manufacturers if you actually made radios which were sort of unique, you would sell heaps and heaps of them. Now, I know that with Chinese radios, the whole point of them is, you know, making them at a super cheap cost, trying to get as many of them out there as possible, like the Baofeng UV5R, there's probably millions and millions of these out there by now. So that's, I can understand. That is the point of those companies is to try and manufacture as many radios as possible. If there was someone willing out there to do a little bit more development in the amateur radio space to develop radios on frequencies which are not two meters and 70 centimeters, then I think that they would do pretty well and they would sell quite a lot. Take for example, the Zygu G90. The Zygu brand has really started to branch out to other things. They're developing these SDR HF radios, the G90, the X6100, the X6200. So Zygu is kind of playing around about in this space. So I'm hoping that there'll be a manufacturer that does something similar to what they're doing, but slightly different. And what do I mean by that? Well, one thing that I've been recently looking for is something like this. This is a 10 meter, well, it's actually a CB radio, but I believe that it'll also go up to 10 meters. Do you remember the old 10 meter handheld radios? Years ago, there used to be lots of them on CB. Um, they're a little bit harder to get hold of now, but this is one of them. And when I looked at this, I was looking to get one of these so that I could use my 10 meter FM repeater, uh, my local one, and also so I could work FM contacts when the sporadic E around, so I could also hopefully work SSB. This radio doesn't have SSB, it's got AM and FM, and I don't think that it went up high enough in frequency when I looked at it and also didn't have things like the correct CT, CSS tone and all that sort of stuff. But it, they were sort of on the right track, and I'd like to see more of these sort of things. If you remember these, this is the Magnum 1012, this is what I was talking about. These are, I don't think that you can get these new, but this does SSB as well. This is a 10 meter, I think it's five watt, four, five watt handheld radio, which does 10 and 11 meters. And this is pretty cool. This is unique. I reckon if the Chinese manufacturers were to make something like this, they would sell a bucket load of them. And it would be good for the amateur radio community to get on something like the 10 meter band with these. Um, it's obviously very easy to get onto VHF and UHF, two meters, 70 centimeters with cheap handheld radios. Uh, barring also, if the Chinese manufacturers are going to make something like this, make sure that it is compliant with the rules. It's not that hard to make them compliant with the rules, but uh, as far as spurious emissions are concerned, but maybe we want something like this. Branching that out even further, this is another radio that I was looking at, is an Alinco DR03. This is a mobile radio, mobile 10 meter radio only. And if you've been watching my channel recently, there are some manufacturers that have done this. I got a 10 meter monoband radio from Striker Radios. It's based off the Anytone or the uh, Retivus RT95 type of look. It was okay-ish, something not as slick as a Linko. Linko, a uh, great Japanese company. And in actual fact, these radios are becoming very hard to get hold of. So that means that the price of them goes up and there's obviously demand for them because nobody seems to sell them and it's hard to get hold of them. This uh, radio I've been trying to find here in Australia, it's been out of stock, it's on back order. I had a look in the US, but by the time it lands here, it's gonna be around $500, uh, which is way too expensive for something like this because of the shipping and obviously everything else. But the DR03, that is a great little mobile radio. I'd love to see the Chinese make something similar that could compete or replace this if it's unavailable anymore. and. Then similar to that, the six meter version, I was trying to find a six meter monobander, same price, $500.
It's going to take, I can't get it here. Six meters is a wonderful band, especially when the sporadic E propagation opens up in the summer months, um, especially in the Northern Hemisphere right now at the moment in the middle of 2024. Sporadic E is well underway and you can work lots of local simplex, lots of local FM repeaters, and there's lots of experimentation that can be done. Uh, I'd love to be able to play with APRS on six meters, but I just don't have the radios. You just can't get hold of them. And for something like this, it's too expensive to actually buy, to actually invest in. Whereas if the Chinese manufacturers actually made something that was similar and worked well like this, it would be really, really good. And then it got me thinking a little bit more and I thought, what else could, what else has been done in the past that could be replicated by the Chinese manufacturers? This video is a lot about trying to get them to move away from the VHF and UHF uh, side of things, building those or making those radios in bulk and then just trying to sell them or sell as much as possible. By the way, let me know in the comments below what you think of this, if this is something that you should think that they should go down that it would be either good or bad for amateur radio. But some of the things that have been done in the past is something as cool as this. My friend Mike N2MAK, he did a video the other day using this radio. This is an Alinko DJG7T. It's a mono band uh, 1296, uh, 23 centimeter radio. It also does two meters and 70 centimeters. This is cool, it's a tri-band radio. And then I, remembered that there was many radios that were similar to this for 23 centimeters. This is a monoband 23 centimeter Yaesu FT912. This TID, uh, 12, yeah, 1240 to 1300 megahertz. And I don't know, what year was this? This was many years ago, 1990s. The 1990s seemed to have quite a lot of these radios. Yaesu did uh, quite a few, Elinko did quite a few. Here's another one, a Yaesu FT2311. That's another monoband radio, 1296 FT2312. And I guess it kind of drove the interest up on those bands and it made it easy. Here's a dual band version. This is a bit of a unique one, a dual band FT5800, 70 centimeters and 1296. One, like two meters isn't even on this radio. And then this one again, two meters and 70 centimeters. Isn't that, isn't that a sexy looking front panel on that radio? The FT6200. And then you've got this, a tri-band. And I I mean, I don't know much about this radio, an older FT7800, but tri-band, 270 and 23 centimeters, which is like, you don't even see these anymore. You usually only see the dual band or dual watch versions. So I guess the whole point of this video is to try and wait, erase some awareness, see what kind of interest is out there in the community, in the amateur radio community, if you'd like to see some of the Chinese manufacturers move into this space and to make radios which aren't sort of conventional VHF and UHF radios, which is just, you know, I know that they can make them real easy, but surely we can, you know, develop and make some more radios for different bands, different amateur radio bands, because I could see that there would be a lot of interest. You just only have to look at the Quanchang UVK5. The fact that if that radio was released as just a VHF UHF radio and it couldn't do anything else, eh, people would be like, you know, yeah, sure, it's another one of those radios. Had a couple of other features. But the fact that it had the chip in it and people have even been buying drop-in boards now which even fix the HF so it sounds even better, modifying it so that you could receive HF on your handheld. Uh, that's kind of the innovation that we're looking for in the amateur radio community, something that's hackable, you know, something that can do something that's out of the ordinary, not just VHF and UHF, 2 and 70 centimetres. If we can get a radio which can do some of these other bands, 6 metres, 10 metres, uh, 11 metres, 12 metres even, or 23 centimetres, that would be really, really cool. So I hope that if you are watching from a Chinese manufacturer, or this even extends out not only to those manufacturers, Yaesu, Icom, uh, Elinko. I think that there is still a, a bit of interest in these bands and we are building interest. There's the, obviously the IC905, the Icom come out with, but something that's a little bit cheaper, that's easier for people to get involved into the band. By the way, did I ask earlier, is Elinko actually doing radios anymore? Because I, if they're all out of stock and they're all on back order, are they actually 
still making radios or have they gone by the wayside like Kenwood kind of did and now Kenwood's kind of making a little bit of resurgence again? I'd be interested to know the answer to that because I can't get a definitive answer as to whether Alinko has stopped making radios. But besides that, let me know what you think in the comments below. I've done heaps of reviews on all of these handheld radios before and some of the ones that I mentioned earlier. If you want to see those, then they will appear in videos here on the screen that you can click on and watch.